So here we're faced with the limit of this function and we're asked to show that it's zero via the pinching theorem. Now remember the pinching theorem involves simple inequalities. So what we need is some simple inequalities involving this function. How do we do it? Well, let's just consider sine 1 on x. Are there any inequalities for sine? Well, yes there are. We know that the sine function lies between minus 1 and 1. Okay, what we're trying to do here is get this middle part to look like this x sine 1 on x. Now, a tempting uh, technique would be to multiply through by x, but you need to be careful here with the inequalities because you don't know if x is positive or negative. So we're going to try the following. Okay, so... I know that my function is less than or equal to its absolute value and the function is greater than or equal to the negative of its absolute, absolute value. Now, sine 1 on x, absolute, is less than or equal to 1. So I can obtain the following inequality. And similarly, down here, I can obtain this inequality, minus absolute x. So now I can take the limit here, here, and here as x goes to infinity and then hopefully apply the pinching theorem. So let's take the limits everywhere and not touch the inequalities. is going to be zero, the limit on the right is also going to be zero, and the limit in the middle is the, the limit that we want. So we get zero is less than or equal to the limit that we want, and zero is also greater than or equal to the limit that we want. Now this situation can only occur if the thing in the middle is zero. So the limit in the middle is squeezed, it's squeezed or pinched to become zero. By the pinching theorem. Okay, so the basic idea is start with a simple inequality, try to formulate the function out of that inequality, being careful with the, with the inequalities. Here we had to um, do something slightly different.